hidden with the trailhead. And last video, I said Burn Peak was wrong. Let's talk about that. Check us out on our other platforms. So last video, I made a bold statement that Burn Peak is wrong, or Seth, um, firmly Seth Bicax, was wrong about the Kent Travail. Um, right off the bat, I, this is my opinion, just like that's his opinion. And that's all this is. It's just an opinionated thing. Um, but it's something that I wanted to say because I look at bikes differently than Seth does. Seth is a former... BMX freestyler. So when he looks at a bike, he looks at a bike as, you know, as such. When he sees a trail, he sees a skate park. He does things a lot harder and a lot more intense than I would ever do. Um, it's kind of like that old saying, when you have a hammer, everything begins looks like a nail. Well, everything looks like a skate park to Seth. And that's nothing wrong with him, that's just his style of riding. Versus my style of riding, which is more timid. I'm an ex-BMX racer, so when I see a trail, I look for as fast lines as possible. I roll most of my stuff. I don't hit big jumps. I don't jump things for the most part at all. And I'm, since I'm a timid rider, I look at bikes completely different than Seth. So let's talk about what's good on this bike. This bike is an outstanding entry level bike because of some key features. The big thing is the fork. Finding a bike at this price point with an SR Suntour fork of that quality is unheard of. And that's what makes this bike so awesome. That's the same fork you can buy on bikes that cost seven to $900. And that's what really makes this bike stand out. Um, most inexpensive bikes, that is the worst part about it is the fork. They put junky, you know, trash forks on them that aren't worth even using other than riding on the streets. And that is why this bike stands out so much. Another big thing with this bike is the semi-modern drivetrain. I say semi uh, because it doesn't have a clutch and it, you know, it's, it's not the best quality, but it still gives you a pretty good range. I believe it's 11 to 42 tooth or 12 to 42 tooth. Um, so it gives you good range for a one by, especially at this price point. Typically at this price point, you get the cheap three by seven with a Tony derailleur um, and not the best quality. You have too much chain. You have that stupid front uh, shifter uh, derailleur with the uh, the old riveted three-speed uh, uh, cassette or sorry uh, cogs I mean that stuff is junk and that's why this bike is so awesome because it comes more modern of a drivetrain another thing is the more modern cockpit the fact that it has wide bars and a short stem they're starting to listen to what people want finally with these bikes and you know, it's, is it the best? No, but at least it gets you on the trail and it's something that you can enjoy. So let's talk about what sucks on this bike. So the big thing with this bike is this bike is a Walmart bike, which means anytime they could cut corners, they did. Um, from the quality of the grips to the pedals to the, the people putting it together. Um, the bike is thrown together with, you know, not much care or um, worry about them having to service it later. So if they put a bike on the shelf with wheels that are out of true, who cares? Um, and that's the problem with Walmart bikes is, you know, they're trying to put as many together as possible, not necessarily putting bikes together for quality. And anytime you get a Walmart bike, you, you kind of expect that you're going to have to do some wrenching on it to make sure it's perfect. And it, it that's kind of the problem with buying bikes from big box stores like Walmart or Target or any other big box store for that matter. Um, because, you know, they don't go through it. They don't make sure things set up the way it should be. They just sell you a bike like you're buying a bag of potatoes. Um, the, another big problem with this bike and something that what I would change right away is the brakes. Mechanical disc brakes are not much better than V-brakes. Um, if you've ever used mechanical disc, you're basically white knuckling it the whole way down the hill. Um, and you know, you definitely want to upgrade these to some nice hydraulic brakes. And as Seth showed in his video, 60 bucks, you can get some decent brakes that are hydraulics and you know, you have better stopping power. I honestly think that's why he had that wreck in uh, I think it's the second video he made on this bike because he wasn't able to slow down because you know, it mechanical brakes are off. Um, Another thing I would do right away with this bike 
is I would literally take apart anything that has bearings. So the hooks, the bottom bracket, and the headset. Uh, grease all of it, make sure things put together properly before I hit the trail. I also would look at the wheels and make sure they're in true. Um, a lot of times, sometimes the spokes are not even tight. So that's something I definitely would go through, make sure everything works good, uh, check the shifting, make sure everything works great. So if you're willing to wrench on your bike, you can you know, get a good value with this bike. If you're inexperienced in that, this is a great bike to learn on how to wrench because, hey, if I damage a expensive bike, I'm not out a whole lot of money versus if I damage an ex a high-end Trek or Yeti or whatever you're talking about. Um, so, I mean, those are the big things I would place. I think if you do those things, you can enjoy this bike right off the bat without much money spent. And as you go on and as you progress, you then replace those parts as you're needed. You know, you upgrade the, uh, the drivetrain to a clutchless derailleur. You upgrade the rear cassette to a higher range. You upgrade the front cranks to uh, external bearing bottom bracket. So these are things you can do later that you don't have to do right away and you can spread that cost over a year or two years and enjoy your bike now and you know get to uh get the nicer parts as you need them um so i hope i explained myself a little better the last video was very rushed um i was trying to get a video out immediately with the uh because uh, seth released his video that morning and it was rushed, it wasn't the best quality, and I didn't explain things as much to explain my thinking behind bikes. Um, so once again, this is my opinion versus Seth's opinion. Um, I know the title's kind of clickbaity. I apologize, that's kind of the point. Um, you know, this is the, the world we live in. So I, I hope you would, uh, if you have questions about what I believe, comment below. I, I read all the comments, I answer them. Um, well, let's have a discussion about this bike. Um, but once again, I say the Kent Travel is a great bike for beginners. Use it for what it's for, XC bike. You know, enjoy gravel roads, enjoy easy trails, and get on your bike and ride, and that's the most important thing. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Check us out on other platforms.